Well, aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Hallelujah. Stand to your feet for just a couple of moments. Amen. We got a short time here this morning. We'll be we'll be out by this afternoon. I'm just I'm just messing with you. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you ready to be taught the word of God today? Amen. Amen. You know, when I come into the house of God, I I don't want to just it become a ritual routine. I want to have an encounter with God. An experience with God. And I believe if we'll open up our hearts and our minds unto Him today, that He's got something to say to us. He's got a word for you here today that's going to bring you through whatever you're going through. I was praying this morning, and I pray a lot. I don't... I don't do it every day. I switch up a lot of things. There's some things I do pray every day, but one of the things I pray is Psalms 23 often. And I thought about the last verse there, Pastor, where it says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. You've got God's promise of goodness and mercy. No matter what you're surrounded by, no matter what comes your way. Somebody say amen. amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you today, God. We ask for the adorning of the Holy Ghost, as you said in the book of Isaiah, that it would remove burdens and destroy yokes. I pray here today, God, anoint our ears. God, with a fresh anointing to hear your voice. God, adorn our minds and think through our thoughts. God, we yield our hearts to you, God. And we ask you, Father, to fill our hearts with your presence, with your love, God, which overflows. We pray here today, God, that you would lead us and guide us in this service here. I pray, Father God, here today that there would be deliverance among your people. Salvation would be wrought. I pray for healings and miracles, God. I pray for signs and wonders here today, God. I pray, God, as we partake of the bread of life here today, God, that when we leave this place here, God, we will know that we've been in your presence and that there is a God. And I praise you for it, Father. I give you honor and I give you glory. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated for just a few moments here. I'm going to try to hurry today. Amen. Get you out just as soon as we can, but we want to obey the Spirit of God. Amen. I, I want to share with you from the book of 2 Chronicles in chapter 20. And I'm going to start reading at verse 3 here this morning. I've Actually, I, I've referred to this passage of Scripture a lot over the years. And I, I've just become fascinated with this, this story that we find here in the Bible concerning King Jehoshaphat. And uh, Jehoshaphat was a, a famous Judean king at, who had led his people back to true worship of God during his reign. And he was the son of another godly Judean leader named King Asa, if you remember, they're studying in the Word of God. And King Jehoshaphat was around about 35 years old when he began to rule the kingdom of Judah. And we find that through our studies that he reigned for 25 years. And during Jehoshaphat's reign... We find in this passage here in 2 Chronicles, we find that word had came to him that Judah was about to be evaded. And we find here in verse 3, and it says, Jehoshaphat feared, and I know many commentaries say that he was afraid, and, and there may have been a moment there of fear, but how many of you know, as the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 For God has not given us the spirit of fear 
but a power. See, you have the power of God that lives on the inside of you. Amen. Power to overcome any fear, any anxiety, any stress. Doesn't matter what comes against your mind. Doesn't matter what comes against your body. Doesn't matter what comes against your family, your husband, your wife, your children. God said, I've given you power. Everybody say power. Amen. See, there's not anything that the devil can throw at you that God hasn't given you victory over already. See, because it's already been completed. It was finished at the cross some 2,000 years ago. Amen. We just have to now receive it by faith. Somebody say, by faith. But I believe when he talks about fear, see, when the Bible was, you, you know, written and all, it didn't have commas and semicolons and, you know, exclamation marks and periods and so forth. It was continued. And I believe that the word fear here that God is speaking of this morning, that he had a, such a holy reverence of God. He honored God in such a way, and the Bible said, and he set himself to seek the Lord. He set himself to seek the Lord. Why? Because he was about to be invaded by the Ammonites and the Moabites and the inhabitants of Mount Seir. And have you ever felt like your whole world was under attack? That your whole world was being invaded. Maybe it was sickness and disease and you were at the brink of death. Maybe it was, you know, you were at the brink of divorce. Your marriage had been invaded. Your children attacked with drugs and alcoholism. Invaded by the forces of darkness. Invaded. The Bible said that the God of this world has blinded the minds of the lost. But thank God, God came and brought light in the midst of darkness. I'm so glad that while yet we were dead in our trespasses and sins, that he yet loved us. We find here in this passage a time when seemingly everything could go wrong for King Jehoshaphat, it did. Have you ever been in that place, in that position? Where it seemed like this, everything just hit you at one time. And you said, my God, what is going on? Every time I turn around, this is happening and that is happening. You ever been there? Am I the only one? And you know, there's an old saying that says, when it rains, it pours. Sometimes our mind is attacked with so many things, we're like, is this ever going to stop? But there's some key points here that I want to bring out to you that I believe that will revolutionize your life, that will change you forever. We find that these particular foreign armies, they were huge. They were vast. Without the intervention of God, they could annihilate King Jehoshaphat's forces if they went to war. Have you ever said, you ever prayed, come to a point in your life where God, if, if you don't do something, I, I'm not going to make it. I mean, come on, you know, you can be real with God. He already knows. But the Bible said, and he set himself to seek the Lord. The word set in the Hebrew, it means he committed himself. Why is that important for you and I to understand? Because you see, when you are invaded... By the powers of darkness, you've got to set yourself in a position. You've got to focus entirely and completely on God. You've got to commit yourself. You've got to set yourself in order to seek God. It also means that he dedicated himself. 
It also means he consecrated. That means, consecrate means to set apart in its simplest form. When you're attacked, what is it that you do? There's so much anxiety and stress and fear in our society today. We're turning to the pills and we're turning to, you know, this and we're turning to that and we're trying to. Can I tell you there's only one way? Commit yourself. Dedicate yourself. Set yourself apart to seek God. Somebody say amen. Amen. Now look at this. Here in 2 Chronicles, in verse 3 here. Not only did he commit and dedicate and consecrate himself, but it was for one purpose. For one plan. And that is to worship and discover God's will. Now I want you to notice something here. This is important you understand this. He didn't allow anyone or anything to distract him. Because he was committed. Somebody say, I'm committed. committed. Somebody say, I'm dedicated. dedicated. Somebody say, I consecrate myself myself. unto the Lord. Are you getting it this morning? Why is that important? Because there will always be someone or something that will try to pull you away from the purpose, the plan, and promises of God. Always. There will always be something to try to distract you. How many times have you purposed, you planned, you had an unction inside of you to begin to kneel before God and pray unto him and inquire of him, seek his will, and then all kind of thoughts start coming. The phone rings. Shut that thing off. It isn't God, but it's become an idol to many people. Can I just preach the truth this morning? See, Jehoshaphat here demonstrated that through humility and total dependence, he had a higher trust in God than he did his military resources. Oh, they were powerful. They were at his disposal. But he knew that there was one that was sovereign. See, sometimes... You know, we get so focused on the problem rather than the promise that we don't recognize God is with us in the midst of the battle. I mean, you think about, I I, I think about social media. It just boggles my mind sometimes the things that I read and the things I hear people saying. I mean, we talk about and we magnify situations and circumstances like there's no God. Hey, can, can I let you in on something this morning? Can I? It may be a secret to some, some of you. He's still on the throne. He hasn't left. Come on. Somebody ought to praise him. You ought to just give a shout of praise to God. He's there. Hallelujah. He's still ruling and he's still reigning. Hallelujah. He still owns the earth and the fullness thereof. Glory to God. He hasn't changed, church. Somebody say amen. God is with us. Can I tell you... I, when I was preparing this, God spoke this so clear to me. Even when it seems like he isn't doing anything, he's working. He's mainly working on you and me.
was that house my wife threatened me. She said, no, you and I. <laughs> she's my English teacher. She's going to correct me often. You know why he's working on us? Because he's already, the battle's already been won. Isn't it wonderful to know, and I've said this numerous times, that we are engaged in a battle that's already been won? We just had to walk it out. Somebody say amen. When it looks like God isn't doing anything, he's already done everything. We have to seek after it and discover that which is already done. We just have to find out how God wants to do it. See, we think because God moved a certain way back in 61 or 71 or 81 or 91, it doesn't matter the year, the number, the day. Listen to me. God, can I just say it real simple? God demonstrates himself in different forms in different manners. Like he told Moses, sometimes, you know, he said, you know, I, I want you to strike the rock. Somebody say, strike the rock. And then there was a time God said, I want you to speak to the rock. But what did Moses do? He struck the rock. Why? Because we are caught up in all these rituals, all these patterns. We think God's going to move this way or that way. But we have to be open. Somebody say amen. Amen. Just because it worked in 61 doesn't mean that God's doing it the same way he or is doing it today in 2019. Man, I know that's hard. Change is hard. Somebody say amen. amen. We just got to seek after his will. We've got to set ourselves apart. When I go to social media sometimes, I'm, I'm, I'm like, does these, do, do these folks have a, a, a job? <laughs> a career? I mean, dude, come on, let's be honest with ourselves. If we invested as much time seeking after God Amen. as we do, where's my phone? Where the satellite? This one. Or, or the remote. <laughs> Just fight over the remote. I'm glad we don't have TV. I mean, we got TVs all, all in about every room, but we don't have cable and internet and all that. We might be fighting over it too, huh? <laughs> Pastor, you mean y'all fight? Boy, I tell you what, knock down, drag out. <laughs> I don't let straight up your halo. You've been married over two days. You know that. <laughs> now notice here. You okay? He said he set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together. Everybody say together. Say it again, say together. I, I want to say something to the husbands, wives today. We're in this together. You're in it together. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Oh, yeah. When the enemy comes in and invades your family, man, let me tell you something. You're the head of the house. You have one over you. But when the enemy comes in, you need to declare that like a flood, <laughs> God's going to lift up a standard. Somebody say amen. amen. See, men, you've got to decide something in your heart that God has placed you. He's positioned you as prophet, king, and priest of your home. Somebody say amen. 
And when the enemy comes to steal your marriage, your children to drugs and alcohol, you say, no, no, no. When the enemy comes in and tries to steal your children and they begin to have an identity crisis and they don't really know who they are because the world is dictating to them that no, it's all right to have those kind of feelings. It's all right to see yourself different. No, that isn't what the Word of God says. Men, you begin to decree and declare, I'm not going to accept it in Jesus' name. I plead the blood of Jesus over my family, over my children, over my grandchildren. And devil, you're not going to steal my family. You're not going to steal. You're not going to destroy my marriage. No sorry in the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus be against you. Well, I was going to teach, but Are you getting this? I'm trying to get past verse 3 and 4. You know why it's important? He said a fast. Sometimes you got like Paul said. He said I die daily. <laughs> you got to crucify the flesh. You say no sorry devil. I'm not going to allow the things of this world to control me and dictate what I do in life. I've got just a few moments. Is it okay if I go ahead? The Bible said they gathered themselves together to watch this, to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all of the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. What, what am I saying? They sanctified themselves. Do you see that? They sanctified themselves to seek God. They became one accord. Every time I read in the Bible when people were in one accord, when they were in unity, amen, when the, all confusion ceased to be. Somebody say amen. All confusion, all chaos, it ceased to be when you get in one accord. We as the church, as the body of Christ, are joined together. Guess what happens if I sever, if my hand is severed from my body? It's going to die. That's why the body of Christ, that's why it's important to come to church, to be a part of the body of Christ. See, there was a, there was a foolish, foolish statement I made when I was about, see, I moved, I moved out when I was about 16 years old. You know, I, I, I thought I was, you know, like the old, old country song, you know, Lee, Lord Brown used to sing. I thought I was a bad, bad, you know, bad man. <laughs> Badder than old King Kong. Meaner than a junkyard dog. Yeah. You know, I, you know what I told my family? My mom, my stepdad, and I, I don't need nobody. Yeah. Get out of going to school and working two jobs. <laughs> I remember sitting in that two bedroom, two bedroom single wide trailer, and it about to fall apart. And me too. <laughs> Only thing left was puffed up with pride, <laughs> cause my belly show what. Don't say anything. <laughs> I was sitting there with a jar of peanut butter. And I remember for several days eating off that jar of peanut butter. What am I saying? We need one another. We're family. You know, when, you, when you're prideful, destruction's waiting. Yeah. I remember some of the older folks, and I'm some of those folks now. Oh, don't laugh. They say, boy, you got a long, hard road ahead of you. You better get it together. Get your mind right. We got to come together. 
love one another. We see our brother, our sister fall, what do we do? We help them up. I don't know who it's for. It wasn't even had anything to do with this message. Can I tell you that no matter what anybody says or does to you, if you'll walk in love, God will take care of them. Because love conquers all. I tell my wife sometimes, I said, hold your peace. Woman, hold your peace. You women know what I'm really telling her. Come on. You know, a woman will tell you what they think, then what not thinking. See, God's given you the ability. I know some of you thinking, yeah, but Pastor, you, you don't understand what's been, what they said and what they did. The Bible said, consider him. That one that hung on an old rugged cross. The Bible said that they spit upon him. They slapped him. Took a rod to hand, they beat him. Said they even plucked the hairs from his face. They beat him with a cat of nine tails. Two of the very organs were showing. They pierced his hands and his feet. Hung them on a cross. They laughed and they mocked. They railed upon him. But love prevailed. My God in heaven. He had you on his mind. Even the thief on the cross, he recognized God was sovereign. Ever said that you've ever committed or will commit? When Jesus hung on the cross, the blood that he shed, his last word says, it is finished. I've took care of it. That's what he said. I want to ask you this morning, would you accept that? Will you receive that by faith this morning? And Judah gathered together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all of the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah in Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court, the courtyard there. And said, O Lord God of our fathers, art not thou God in heaven? The very first thing he did when he went to God to, for prayer, he began to exalt God. When's the last time? Say, I'm going to tell you something. Can I tell you this morning? When you begin to exalt God, when you begin to declare who he is, notice what he said. He said, art not thou God in heaven, and rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thy hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee. What is he saying? God, you're sovereign. He said, all power in heaven and earth has been given to me. Guess what? He gave you that power before he left this earth through the power of the Holy Spirit. 
Art not thou God, verse 7, who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel and gavest it to the seed of Abraham? How many of you know we're of the seed of Abraham? That's right. Why is that important? Because we're covenant partners now. Did he not tell Abram that you now will be Abraham and I will bless you? See, we're still reaping from that covenant, from that promise. Because we're that of that seed. He said he gave us it to the seed of Abraham and thy friend forever. I want to stop there for just a moment. Because we're going to close. So you're a friend to God. And I think about when these Ammonites and Moabites and these Enam. Edomites came against Jehoshaphat. Oh, they had their gods. They had their idols. But if you'll notice something here, Jehoshaphat, the very first thing he does in his prayer, he begins to exalt God. Are you catching that? The very first thing he does. He first, he commits himself, he dedicates himself, he sets himself apart. To seek help of God. And notice he gathers all the people together like Pastor said this morning. When you come and join together with another brother or another sister, guess what happens? The Bible said, your prayers together. Are you getting this? I put a thousand to flight. If it will put a thousand to flight, see God's in the multiplication business. Yeah. Not only would it put a thousand to flight, but if you join three together, guess what happens? A hundred thousand. Guess what happens when you bring four people together? See, we underestimate the power that's been given unto us through prayer. Four is a million. I mean, it just continues to escalate. It continues to climb. It continues to multiply that power. I think about, I was sharing with a brother, pastor friend of mine from Atlanta. He came down to visit and Friday afternoon we was walking over the property and around the pond and so forth. And some thoughts began to come to me, the Holy Spirit began to speak to me. I think one of the greatest enemies that we're facing today in the body of Christ, especially in the home, is division. Yeah. Do you know, men, that the Bible says if you don't treat your wife right, that your prayers will be hindered? So I, 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 I'm just that kind of pastor. I've just got to be honest with you. The same way for women. You can't talk down to your husbands. You show them the same respect that you would any other man. Well, I don't know how, what all this pastor had to do with this message, but I guess it's for somebody. I had to live it before I preached it. <laughs> 